Hola community, how is it going? It's uh, me, Paolo, with another update of what's new in Blender since last week. 2.83, yes, we still have new things there. L last week was a weird one because um, for a few days, 2.83 was still in alpha, so it means that new development can happen. But then it moved into beta, which is only bug fixes. However, at the same time is when the cycle for the next, next release opens. 2.90 so there's new things as well for 2.90 i'm gonna first focus on the 2.83 and then jump into the next next blender version <laughs> two new features for sculpt mode well one is more, mainly like a fix the layer brush in sculpt mode in the past if you have used it it was a bit unpredictable the results were like nah, they were not really the best it was very glitchy and buggy in this update, you're gonna find a much better layer brush. It was completely rewritten from scratch, which fixes a lot of the artifacts that happened previously is using the new sculpt API. So it, it works with the rest of the sculpt mode much better, like for masking and inverting, and even has a little small cursor widget to preview the layer height. The new feature is a mesh filter called Sharpen. If you're familiar with the concept of uh, sharpening in like photo editing, for example, where the detail gets more highlighted, well, it's the same, but for meshes. This filter is gonna take the hard edges of your mesh and like pinch the vertices together. So it's even, even more sharp. And the flat surfaces are gonna be more smooth. They're gonna be like the polished. Super handy for hard surface sculpting. Okay, this mesh modeling tool alone might be the reason for many to switch and start using Blender 2.9 Alpha already because many people have been asking for it or for a variation of it. The name of this feature is called Extrude, Dissolve and Intersect, which is uh, very descriptive. It's basically a macro that does these three actions in one tool. You could think of it as a kind of destructive extrude. Uh, it's much more clear here in the demo by Carton comes in very handy when doing CAD modeling, the same as this next feature I'm gonna mention in the modifiers. The Solidify modifier has a new option as a slider where you can control the bevel weights of this Solidify to be on the outside or on the inside. Another great addition for CAD modeling because it means that you can have like the inside part of a mesh with the square um, corners and the outside with the nice bevel, which has modifiers. Another great addition for CAD modeling is that in the complex method of the Solidify modifier, now you can control the thickness per face. And lastly, in the modifiers where you can use a texture mask, if you're using an object to control the coordinates of this mask and this object is an armature, now you can specify which bone to use as coordinates. Again, no more empty hacks, yay! Wrist Pencil got a new modifier, new modifier alert. The texture modifier gives you more control over the UVs of the strokes, fill or both with settings for the offset, the scale and the fitting. More freedom with animation. Now you can animate the mask setting and the use lights in your grease pencil objects. Video sequence editor. In the preview of the sequencer, now you have the sample as a tool, as an operator, but it's also a tool. Baby steps toward more tools in this area. The annotation tool in the sequencer now got onion skinning support. Not meant to be a full-fledged animation system, we have Grease Pencil for that, but it's nice to see onion skinning on the annotations. And to wrap up this recap, let's talk about the user interface. 2.9 is not gonna be as big of a leap as it was from 2.7 to 2.8, so don't worry. 2.9 However, it's looking like a good chance for working more in the user interface to polish all of those uh, little quirks here and there that 2.8 still has. Checkboxes. One of the big changes in 2.8 is that now the interface is single column. Everything is aligned on a list. Checkboxes though, they were a bit of, uh, they, they, they didn't look right. They were like right aligned, but like the checkboxes box were um, like next to the, the button where you can uh, animate, for example. So sometimes you would end up with like text on the left side and then a whole empty area and then uh, the text on the other side. It was a bit weird. Not anymore. Columns can have a heading and then the checkbox can be you know, aligned in a way that it, the checkboxes stay in the middle so it's easier to find and to read and all the text is left aligned from that checkbox so it's easier to, to scan, to go through all, okay, setting, setting, setting and read them all one by one. 
also makes it so like the checkbox and the animate button are not next to each other so you don't press it by mistake. On top of that, it also allows for a more compact design but it's still readable where you can get like a label, checkbox, a drop down menu if it's a setting of that checkbox, still all in one row but very readable. The heading comes in pretty handy because now we can deduplicate text that was otherwise uh, repeated. If the two text boxes start with display for example, now you can put display as a heading on the left and then display text box or uh, whatever other option, but they're all part of like the same group. By the way, this change didn't come out of nowhere, it was necessary for another big change in the UI coming next week. Another big usability improvement that happened last week is in the properties editor when you are viewing like a node setup, but in the properties. Previously, the inputs would have a little circle on the right side where you can choose what to connect that input to. That was a bit unintuitive because in the nodes, the inputs have their little socket on the left side. Now, in the properties editor, you also gonna find them on the left side. Not only that, but also with the proper color of the socket type. So if it's an image, it's gonna be, or a, um, a color, it's gonna be yellow. If it's a value, gray. If it's a vector, purple. Purple? Violet? Pink? That that little, the, the other one. <laughs> Another great usability improvement is in the data block search, for example, materials or meshes or whatever, any data block. If you had a data block called, I don't know, monkey, and then you link another one that was with the same name, like monkey, there was no way to tell which one was linked. Not anymore, now it will tell you which one is a linked one, and you can see also where the file comes from. New theme options for the UV editor. Now you can adjust the opacity of the wire overlay on the UV editor, which is, comes very, very handy, as we can see in that right-click select proposal, when you have a dense mesh, it was very hard to see the image underneath. Not anymore, now you can control how opaque it's gonna be. Another setting you can adjust in the UV editor now is the active face color, which was hard-coded internally, just some legacy from the past. Now, not anymore, you can now tick it and make it your own. So if you make themes, make sure you go and change it to your liking. While we're talking about user preferences, in the key map section, if you added your own custom shortcuts, now you're gonna be able to tell which ones are the uh, internal ones and which one are yours by the icon in the remove button. The, instead of the X, you're gonna see a little X and an arrow to tell that those are yours and your custom ones. Moving over to menus, or more specifically, pie menus, you're gonna find that some of the letters of the entries are underscored now. And this is the same concept that you find in every other menu. Now you can hit the accelerator key or like the one on the, in, on the underscore to execute that action. And lastly, the new search that I mentioned a few episodes ago is now default. Now is the when you should search, you're gonna get the new one. It's, uh, it's the one that features uh, the menu where you can find that. So you don't only get the name of the tool that you're looking for, but also where to find it in the user interface with the shortcut even or an icon, a very cute icon if available. Small note for add-on developers or if you're just making your own little operator in the user interface is that this search will only show those tools, actions, operators that are inside of a menu, that are available in a menu. So you either have to add it to a menu, but maybe you're just playing with it and you don't want to add it to anywhere in the user interface yet. So, even, even though it's recommended, in the user preferences interface, you can enable developer extras and you're gonna find the old search, but also now renamed to like operator search because it just basically looks, shows all the operators, even those that are not, and not available anywhere in their interface. And uh, you can find it in the um, edit menu, operator search. And that is all for this week and also for 2.83. I think it's, we shouldn't see any new features because it's only back fixing, only uh, crash fixing. So try, test your files, test it out. Just, just, do, just go crazy with the latest experimental version and anything weird that you find, please go to report it. You can go from the help menu in Blender, help report the bug, or you can also find a video in this channel where I show you how to report the bug. I'm gonna put it in the description as well. I hope you like this episode. Give it a like if you like it. Give it a dislike also if you dislike it. Subscribe to see more and enable the little notification bell if you want to know as uh, soon as we 
upload stuff or when I uh, prepare uh, the event for a new live stream, for example. I think uh, Blender 2 days, I'm gonna move them from Mondays to Fridays permanently. It makes more sense. Blender releases usually, when everything goes fine, happen on a Wednesday. So that means that maybe a Thursday, it's, uh, the, there is something uh, wrong. But that means that if I make it on a Friday, it would be like right away when people start using it. So more reasons to celebrate. It's be fun. Stay home, stay safe, don't go out. Come on, it's like the, the curve is starting to flatten in most places, luckily. So why even like run it now? Come on, we should, let, let's keep pushing for the lockdown a little bit longer and then we'll see the results. Otherwise, like what for if we just stop now? Anyway, see you next week. Bye.